up, we have stories about weddings. It's a wedding season on Reddit. Holy poo. Lots of people are getting married, and I am here to tell people whether or not there are assholes. And there are a lot of assholes at weddings, and we hear about them on Reddit. So we bring them to you here. Like a returned wedding gift. We have stories about wedding speeches, missed weddings, mother-in-law and wedding dresses, giving away a niece versus daughter. All of the weddings happened on Reddit. Also, we have a few stories about blending families claiming baby names and a cheating spouse or IVF. Those are, that's a choice? Maybe. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you. This one is from Am I the Asshole? Probably are. And the title is Am I the Asshole for Telling My Dad He's Not Allowed to Give His Speech at My Wedding? My fiance and I both in our 20s are getting married in a month and there's a dispute with my dad and he claims I'm being unfair, but I wanted to get some thoughts on it. So dad decided he was going to give a speech at the wedding without saying anything first. He had shared the contents of said speech with his sister, my aunt, and she knew the speech would not sit well with me and mentioned his plan to me. Ha <laughs> ha. Knew the speech would not sit well with me. What kind of bullshit is this guy slinging? So in the speech he already wrote, he talks a lot about his wife as the love of his life, how amazing she is, etc. It's very similar to the speech he gave at their vow renewal 10 years ago. He hasn't shied away from expressing in front of me and to me that he never loved anyone like he loved his wife, how all his past relationships pale into comparison. And that includes my mom, who was his first wife, who left him widowed with an eight-year-old son at the time. To make it even more difficult to hear, the vow renewal was held on my 18th birthday, and I got to celebrate my birthday by hearing dad talk about how mom meant nothing because his second wife was so much better. That's not cool, man. Come on. They were married eight years at the time, but a lot of family and friends didn't attend their actual wedding, and they decided they'd basically have a second one to celebrate, and they decided my birthday was the perfect time to do this. Mm. Anyway, the speech he wrote for my wedding had a lot of this content from what my aunt heard. That's right. I said aunt this time. I can't be bougie anymore. From my dad and read herself. She knew on my wedding day, the last thing I needed to hear was how much he adores his wife when he does so in a way that basically said my mom meant nothing to him. I told him I knew about the speech and he didn't have permission to give the speech at my wedding. Dad asked, why not? And I told him I didn't want him to use my wedding to praise his wife. He said, she means the world to us, so why would I say that? I told him, she means the world to him, but she pales in comparison to my mom who meant the world to me and still does. I told him he might have decided mom meant nothing, but that didn't mean I shared his feelings. He accused me of being sensitive you're being sensitive. And then said it seemed like I didn't care about his wife at all. And then he said she was a good mom to me for the eight years she raised me. I told him she was never anything more than his wife. My mom died when I was wait and my mom died when I was eight and I didn't get a new one. And the last thing I needed to hear is how little she meant on my wedding day. Dad told me to be reasonable and the parents of the bride and groom typically said something. I told him Nothing he had to say had a place at my wedding. That this is mine and my fiance's wedding, not his. I told him to get married again if he wants to do all of, if all he wants to do is praise his wife, but it was not happening at my wedding. He told me to stop acting like a little boy and grow up. I left. Then his wife called crying about the fight dad and I had, which led to dad calling me again and telling me to grow up again. Am I the astronaut? Furkner. No, NTA. Um, NTA. Dad's coping mechanism was to amplify and project, but just assumed everybody else was along for the ride. And, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, he, he lost his wife too, right? So, so maybe he never dealt with that. Never, maybe he never, never got closure from that. Maybe he, I mean, how, how would you, but maybe his way of dealing with, with that was to just throw himself completely into this new relationship and never look up from it. Uh, but never once be a real father that that can step inside his son's mind and say, how would I feel if? Never put himself in his son's shoes. Never think about how it would affect him. Only did what was good for him and assumed it would be good for everybody else without ever talking to them. 
and it, I mean, from the sound of it, OP and his and daddy's wife, which the fact that that she's referred to as that throughout the entire story tells you all you need to know about the relationship between OP and her. She was never even a stepmom, like never even got the title stepmom, not bonus mom, bonus mom, stepmom, dad's wife. It's 100 percent OK to love your spouse. Like, over the moon, love your spouse. I hope you find someone that makes you unashamedly profess your love in front of thousands of people. Love you, Candy Thunder. It's not okay to push that on your children and expect them to just be okay with it. And to do it in a way that that doesn't just shit on the memory of their mother, but do it in a way that that also shits on a part of them. How many times when dad was giving his speeches, did he look at his son, see a f- tear roll down his cheek and, and think, oh, he's just, he's happy. Navy Thunder would say, are you happy? It's like after she gets in trouble and you get mad or something like after she, yeah. Are you happy? Uh, this is bullshit. It's your f- wedding, number one. So it doesn't matter why you get to say yes or no. He doesn't want to do it for anything, any other reason than the reasons you already know, which is to to soapbox for his wife. And why? It's like every time he gets, every time he gets people, every time there's a congregation of people in any way, shape, or form, he's like, ah, open mic night, bet. I'm going to go reuse the, the speech I gave for my vow renewal. It's not his life anymore. You know what I mean? His son has an independent life. His son is trying to start another chapter. And guess what, Dad? By pushing this further and further and further, by the way, calling someone sensitive is not not an insult. Too sensitive, maybe. Like, insensitive, sure. But you're being sensitive. Everyone's sensitive. He's sensitive to his love for his wife. You're sealing the deal, Dad on having a a, your son having an adult life that you aren't part of. That's all you're doing right now. All you're doing is harming your ability to have a, a meaningful and fruitful and lengthy relationship with your child. And then grandchild. But that grandchild's gonna be part OP's mom. And she's, you know, she pales in comparison to your new wife. So are you gonna care about your grandchild? This story is from AITAH and is titled, Am I the Askinaut for not telling my parents that the event they were missing was my wedding? Buckle up, guys. This will be kind of long. So I, 27 female, have a younger brother, Mike, 21 male. He is the definition of a man child and a mama's boy. Always complaining. Always expecting others to bow to him. Just overall an asshole. Ever since he was born, my parents fussed over him for everything. He's not special needs or has or had a traumatic birth or anything of the sort. He was just born. And my parents completely discarded me. My mom, 50 female especially, she went from a loving mother to one of those boy moms that people make fun of on the internet. My father, 50 male, still showed me love and support, but he's always been too much of a coward to stand up to my mother and let me win at least once. The only one who stood up for me was my grandpa, 76 male, who always called my parents out on their bullshit and never liked my brother. I remind him of his late wife, my grandma, and we have a very special bond, but he lives on the other side of the country, and I never see him often. Mike knows our mom prefers him and loves to shove it in my face. Because of this and his behavior, we've we've always been at odds. He's a spoiled brat and an awful human. I can't remember how many times I ended up in trouble for things I did better than him or for the things he framed me with. His only talents are his football skills. He won a scholarship to a nice college out of state. My parents didn't spend a dime on my education because apparently my fund had been used to cover expenses after a fire. Just for me to discover years later that said money was given to Mike to buy a car and a house. I mean, there were red flags earlier, but let's go ahead and drop some now. It's a public university where I met Lucas. 
He was the first person I was really drawn to there. Of course, I met new people who are now my dearest friends, and thanks to them and Lucas, who was my best friend for years before we got together, I managed to move out of my parents' house. Now both Lucas and I are well-known in our fields and have very good salaries. Now to the main issue. Lucas proposed to me a year ago. We're very private people, so we didn't post it on social or anything. And when I told my parents, they dismissed it with a, that's nice. I'm starting to think that they downright didn't listen to me at all. We decided that we wanted a nice but simple ceremony and reception with our friends and relatives. Lucas convinced me to invite my parents and brother, but they never responded to the invite. Oh, this is going a much different place than I thought it was. And whenever I went to visit and began to talk about my wedding without mentioning it was a wedding, my mom would always speak over me about my brother's accomplishments and wild adventures. At one point, I got so fed up with it and interrupted my mom to tell her that there was an event I was planning to organize whose dates were unmovable. She told me that they couldn't attend because my brother was playing the last game of the season that very same day and wanted them to be there. Of course, this favoritism didn't surprise me. They missed my ballets, shows at both my high school and university graduation for things about him. At this point, I wanted to be petty. I told both of my parents that it wasn't a problem to miss the event, purposely omitted the fact that this event was my wedding, and didn't insist further. Flash forward to a few weeks ago, I got married. It was perfect. My family, Lucas's family, and our friends were all there, and we had a blast. My grandpa was happy to give me away, and it was just perfect. My relatives asked multiple times why my parents weren't there with us. I was honest and simply said that they had my brother's game to attend and couldn't come. They gave me a few looks, and my grandpa was visibly angry for a while, but otherwise nothing strange happened. After the reception, Lucas and I left for our honeymoon and were phone-free for the whole duration of the trip. Hold on, time out. For that alone, going phone free for the duration of the trip after this bullshit, because you know, you just know that they're going to go crazy. But once we got back, we discovered that a shit storm was welcoming us home. I turned my phone on and was unable to even unlock it before a storm of notifications popped up. Most of them were from my mother and brother. Mike called me all sorts of nasty names and insulted me because apparently one of my paternal aunts posted the photos of the wedding on Facebook and captioned it with a very obvious dig at my parents, especially my mom, for missing the wedding. The post apparently went viral in my parents' community and they've been publicly shamed for their mistreatment of me. That's why they're mad. That's it. That's the only reason they're mad. It also turns out that my grandpa personally visited my parents to go on a tirade to shame my father, his son, to the point of tears. And this seemed to be my father's breaking point because he was so distraught for missing his only daughter's wedding and for his father's disapproval that he finally rebelled against my mom and is threatening divorce unless she makes it up to me. I think that's the reason why why my mom has been spamming my phone with messages, at first insulting and threatening and then downright pitiful, full of begging and pity parties. Now that I'm home with my husband deciding how to approach the situation, most of my relatives, even those I didn't invite to the wedding, reached out to apologize for what I went through and to claim they had no idea this was happening at home. Can't blame any of my relatives. They all live with my grandpa on the other side of the country or in another state. But my mom's sisters and friends are belittling me for not telling my mom about the wedding because now she's inconsolable at the thought of having missed my wedding. Personally, I think she just claims that to save face, but I'm not sure. Oh, be sure. Be sure, OP. The latest message from my father and mother seem extremely saddened and hurt for missing my wedding. Now my family is divided on three fronts. The majority, majority who's sticking by my side, my maternal aunts shaming me for hurting my mom's feelings, and my maternal grandparents who are adamant that I forgive my mom in light of her atonement. My, my best friends are telling me not to listen to them. So Reddit, am I the astronaut? We have an update, but before we get into that, no. <laughs> these people. Ah, uh, you know, oh. Are you filming, Gerald? I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to leave the voicemail where we say how sorry we were for missing it. Are you filming? Because we'll need this to combat, to com combat that viral post on social. Are you filming? Yes. Okay, here it goes. Darling, we are so upset to have missed this special day. I'm so, we must have been clouded by just a, a storm of information to have not realized what was happening. You must forgive us. We would never do this intentionally. I love you. Bye, sweetie. Call me back, please. Did you get that? Did you get it? Let's see how this bitch likes that. Yeah, parents. Have a nice trip, folks. There's even room for your son there. Ask on one is closer to the sun. And after all, 
That's all they give a shit about, right? That's it. Bullshit. Everything from here on out is just for show, OP. Once they got publicly shamed, that's that's the pain. That's where the pain was that created this change, which is all just for show, to combat the public shame. That's it. They don't give shits. Hell no. They have to pretend to give shits now to combat the public shame. That's it. Edit slash update. Thank you so much for the feedback and love. It's overwhelming. I'm going to address the popular questions here. I did inform my parents about the wedding. I sent traditional on paper invites to all of my guests and was notified that all the invites had reached their addresses. I did not receive any answer from my parents and Mike, a few distant relatives, and some on Lucas's side. I did reach out to all of them through message to double check, and those who hadn't replied told me that they couldn't come. I asked my parents and brother via text, but they didn't respond. It was left on read. Knowing them and given all the things I had to plan, I didn't bother insisting. I didn't repeat the date of my wedding because I had already been told there was my brother's game. Plus, every time I insisted on highlighting my celebrations to get an answer, I was always told that it wasn't that important and not to be pissy and a bother. I would like for you to come to my wedding. Don't be pissy and a bother. (laughs) I just like to live like that because some things were simply more important than me. At this point, I think it's fair for me to not insist anymore. It's not worth the effort. I didn't keep my wedding a secret. I avoided telling my parents that it was my wedding to see if they would be interested in the slightest. But surprise, surprise, they weren't. Despite this, I did openly talk about my wedding with my aunts and uncles. My mother was in the room with us a few times when I discussed venues or dress shops with my aunt, the Facebook post one. But sometimes when mom was on the phone and other times she was just chatting with other people, she never paid attention. When I talked about it during reunions, she smiled and said, that's great, dear. And then would change the subject. Radio silence on dad and Mike. So mom's sitting there listening to like, she, she's watching you talk, OP. She sees your mouth moving, but all she's all she's hearing is, uh, is what's the next thing I need to do for Mike? What does Mike have going on tomorrow? Like she's not even hearing your words. I kept in contact with them because, well, all the times I tried to go no contact in the past, I've been harassed. I tried after my high school, bachelor's, and master's graduations, to which they never bothered to show up for reasons involving my brother. Every time I was shamed for daring to turn my back on the family by my parents, my brother, my maternal aunts, and my maternal grandparents, I think the turning point here is that all of those times, Lucas wasn't by my side. We started dating a little after my last attempt at going no contact. And... Now that I have him here, I feel more confident in my stance. But before that, I wasn't this confident. As I already stated, all my paternal side lives on the other side of the country and wasn't aware of how they treated me. I did try to expose my parents once at 14. My aunts, uncles, and grandpa reprimanded them. They faked being sorry. And once home, I got the beating and gaslighting of my life for lying. After that, I kept in contact regularly with my paternal side, but omitting my parents' abuse out of fear, which to be honest, still haunts me to this day but he was always threatened to be alienated from me if he tried anything. My parents and I are not from the same city. I live in a city an hour drive from my parents' small town, and they don't know my new address because, one, my brother tried to break into my apartment to steal some cash, and my mother backed him up, claiming that siblings share their goods. Hold on. This is a very casual observation. But what the f***? Your brother tried to break in. No, yeah, your brother was trying to break into your house to steal some cash, and your mom was like, "Well, yes, because siblings share things." <sighs> this hurts. Now I moved, and I'll be sure not to tell them where I live. My parents didn't buy my brother a car and a house before he even started high school. They bought him a car for his 16th birthday and a house near his college when he began freshman year. They didn't spend the money for my fund right away. They just lied to me to use it later for my brother, keeping it stored for later in the meantime. So, OP, let's have a little titty chat. Can we talk? Can we talk, OP? Uh, When you try to go no contact, you're not going all the way. And I don't know why. And I don't think chat knows why either. Going true no contact means like blocking people, changing your number if you have to. Truly going no contact contact you tried to go no contact but they harassed you and maybe them show like i i get it but now you have the opportunity to truly go no contact but you gotta have to go all the way you got a taste of it on your honeymoon sounds bad but you know what i mean it was two weeks no phones and how beautiful was that to not have them completely just constantly gnawing at your freaking brain and your soul you can do that again block them cut them off 
no bullshit. You've got your husband by your side now, and I love that you feel more confident now with him. You're a team. You're a unit now. You can do this together. You can absolutely do this, and it is for your marriage. It's not about you anymore. Maybe this will maybe this will give you the confidence to actually go through with it, to do it all the way. No f-ing contact, period, because your marriage is going to be healthier if you do. Of course, you'll be happier, but you've you've something has held you back from pulling the trigger on this to this point. Let's make it not about you. Let's make it about your marriage. Do it for your marriage. Do it for your children. Do you want your children to be treated the way that you were treated your entire life? Do it now to save them that pain. It is a much easier choice to make for someone else than it is for you. I understand that. So let's make it not about you. Hey, I'm Dusty Thunder. This is a story. It comes from Reddit, specifically from the AITA subreddit, and it is titled... Am I the astronaut for not taking future mother-in-law to the bridal appointment? I am looking for advice on how to kindly explain to my future mother-in-law why she was not invited to my bridal appointment. I went to a sample sale back in December and wound up buying the first dress I tried on. My two sisters and my mom were were in the entourage. The dress was 60% off and was exactly what I was looking for. Simple, no lace, no beading, no mesh, fit and flare with a train, so it was a no-brainer that this was the one. My expectations were low, as I was worried there would not be a sample gown that would fit me, but this dress was it. Now, on to my future mother-in-law. She has been so bitter. This entire planning process and makes a face of disgust every time we show her our wedding plans. Hates the colors, the venue, the food, the photographer, you name it. She will find something about it that she does not like. I hate what I see when I look in the mirror, so I was not mentally prepared for her inevitable criticisms of the dress, as, in my opinion, it is, in a way, a criticism of my body. My fiancé disagreed and said that she would never be so harsh about my looks, but I do not feel that way. She would not have liked the experience. She would have talked me out of this dress. My future mother-in-law is not one to buy something on the spot. She would have wanted me to go home and think on it before buying it. Now, this is practical, but not how the sample sale worked, as you had to say yes on the spot, otherwise it would go to another bride. She also would not have been able to see my vision as the dress still needed alterations. For these reasons, I knew taking her along to the appointment would have resulted in tears, confusion, and not finding a dress. I swear I intended to take her to the next shopping trip, which wound up not being necessary. And if she had not started giving me the silent treatment, I was going to take her to a bridal fitting. Now, here's where I might be the astronaut. Since getting the dress without her present, her negative comments have gotten much worse, and I have started getting my guard up as soon as we start talking about the wedding with her. It is to the point where I cannot even handle constructive criticism from her because I am in full fight or flight mode when she is around. I am honestly not sure who is giving who the silent treatment at this point. We have stopped talking to each other. Stalemate. Tomorrow, we're supposed to go have a talk with my fiancé present, and I need to explain to her with a calm head why things have changed between us. I feel like this all could have been avoided if she had just come to the damn bridal appointment in the first place, and if I had a spine, I could have always just ignored her comments and brought the dress anyways. Am I the astronaut? No! You know, uh, being human sucks sometimes. And this is one of those times because instead of being able to relish in the magic of this process and of these moments and of these memories, you have to deal with someone's ego. You have to deal with someone who whose ego is so in control that she's offended by everything. She's offended by the way things look She's offended that your taste is so much different than hers. She's offended that your vision is different than hers. She's offended that you exist. This is even worse because she's offended that she was excluded. Being excluded for someone like this is like, (laughs) it's like the C word. It's top tier. It's next level, right? 
It's all about the optics. Yeah, beer today. And, and now I think it's twofold for her now. She already, it sounds like she already hates everything that you love, which means she hates you, right? OP, there's maybe two separate things, but I think they're both still true. So there's that, like she hates everything and it would have been a bullshit experience. She's not going to stop. She can't contain that. She knows exactly what she's doing. If she hates everything, save her some stress. Say, sit it out. You can set out all these things so that way you don't have to go through the stress of seeing a bunch of shit that you obviously don't like. Sit it out. But you have to deal with this person and this ego and all of the thought that you put into do I or don't I bring her to this sample sale. That's a hard combo. Sample sale. Sample sale. The human torch was denied a bank loan. All the thought that you had to put into this because, listen, listen to this. She would not have liked the experience. She would have talked me out of this dress. She's not something to buy or she's not someone to buy something on the spot. She would have wanted me to go home and think on it before buying it, but that's not how the sale worked. She would have not been able to see my vision as the dress still needs alterations. I knew taking her along to the appointment would have resulted in tears, confusion, and not finding a dress. You thought all that shit through before making the decision not to bring her. This person's ego is already such a thorn in your life that you are having to put that much thought into every decision and it still ends in calamity can you see this it is a kobayashi maru it does not matter what you do you will not win and that's either symbolic because you are not worthy of her son so she's going to shit on everything, regardless of if she looked at it and she was like, damn, I really like that. No, Pfft, shit on it. You are not worthy. Or is she just truly a, a, a bee? Maybe she's just one of these. A bee is though. It's possible, right? But now also, she's been, <laughs> she's been publicly slighted by being excluded, which in her eyes is a statement of less than. I know we can't have that. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder again with another Reddit story for you. This one comes from AITAH and is titled, Am I the astronaut for telling my husband I'm not parenting my stepson anymore? Ah, uh, shit. My mother-in-law, 55 female, lives with me, 30 female, my husband, 29 male, and our three kids. Stepson, seven, my daughter, six, and our daughter, one. Some info, his mom is around, but he only sees her maybe two days a month. All the kids' needs and wants come out of my paycheck. The issue is that my mother-in-law has what I consider an unhealthy attachment to my stepson. She's to the point where she's obsessed with him. He can do nothing wrong in her eyes. He sleeps in bed with her every night, even though he definitely has his own bed. If I tell him to do something he doesn't want to do or she doesn't think he should do, she either does it for him or throws a fit saying he shouldn't have to. Oh, frick. The breaking point was last night when I told the kids to go to bed and specified they needed to go to their own bed. My stepson went and got in my mother-in-law's bed. I told him he needed to go get in his bed. He threw a fit saying she said he could, and she's screaming saying that he always sleeps with her. I ended up winning that argument, but then I hear her talking to my husband saying, he's only slept in his bed one night this summer. He always sleeps with me. Then I made the comment that he's going to sleep in his bed every night once school starts, and she laughs and goes, no, he's not. I was so angry at that point, I just walked away. Then I hear him in his bedroom saying, saying that when I go to bed, she'll come get him. He said that I'm going to get mad, and she goes, I don't care. At that point, I told my husband, I'm not parenting him anymore. I'll still help him, but I'm not parenting. She can pay for and bring him to all of his extracurriculars. She can get him up and bring him to school. She can buy all school, school clothes and supplies. If he wants to stay up till 5 a.m., 5 so be it. If he wants to eat nothing but microwave ramen, I'm done fighting it. My husband told me that Stepson is going to be the one to end up suffering from it, and I responded by telling him that I can't take the constant walking on eggshells in my house and the stress, so I'm washing my hands of this. So am I the astronaut for saying I'm not parenting my stepson? Top comment here is NTA. My question is, though, while your stepson is disobeying and fighting you and your mother-in-law is undermining you, what is your husband doing in all of this? Why isn't he laying down the law with both his mother and his son? Yeah, uh, that's the bigger issue. Like, the stepson, what, what kid, how old is this kid? 
Ba ba da ba da. Seven. Seven. The kid's seven. Um. So I feel like he's he's definitely aware that he's taking advantage of the situation, but. Mother-in-law is the issue here. Mother-in-law, mother-in-law is the antagonist here, right? Mother-in-law is the one that's thwarting every every attempt to parent here. But as a step-parent, this is where things get weird, right? Because because yes, you are a, a a practical parent to this child, but depending on your relationship and how you've blended your family, you have no actual authority unless given to you by other parents. Unless some agreement is present there, there's like a, a ceiling that 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 prevents you from having the this is my kid kind of power, right? Um, your husband has that, and he's not doing jack shit. He's watching all of this happen, watching her thwart every attempt to do anything, undermining you at every f-ing turn, and he's just like, this is fine. I understand you saying, like, I'm not going to, I under, I know exactly what you're doing. You're saying I'm not going to parent him anymore to create pain for mother-in-law and for him. Him trying to divert this to he's going to be the one to suffer. Well, that's going to be collateral damage here. But no, he's not because he's still going to get taken care of. But mother-in-law is going to have to put her money where her mouth is now. And if she wants to, <laughs> if she wants to, to be his savior, be his savior all the time. Unless hubby is willing to step up and take control of the situation and in doing so, knight his wife. That sounds bad, but you know what I mean. Grant her the power to truly parent. Grant her the power to veto this bizzo mother-in-law. He's the only one that possesses that power. She's the queen dowager, right? He's the king. You're the queen, OP. But... You need him to step up and say, I'm stepping up and she has the power to step up too. So you better step down. The fact that that she's not just a boundary stomper. She lives with you. She lives with you. So the, like uh, the frequency of her is an intolerable level. She lives with you. You can't even be like, Hey, flush the toilet. He doesn't have to. I'll do it for him. Hey, no, you can't have candy for dinner. Oh, yes, he can. I said it was fine. Hey, uh, pants would be good. Oh, he doesn't need those. We're all family here. You're powerless. You have been stripped of all power for this one child, which is a whole other discussion. One child. You've been stripped of all power. It has to be restored. Like you you saying, I'm not going to parent him anymore, uh, is, is pretty much just saying, I'm not going to be his taxi and his financial provider anymore because I have no other power or respect. It, I'm literally just paying child support and I'm an Uber for this kid right now. And that's it. Oh, and, and I take verbal beatings throughout the day. So that's fun too. You symbolically said, I will not parent him anymore. You weren't allowed to parent him since she's been around. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder once again with another Reddit story for you. This one from Best of Redditor Updates. Hooray! Title of this one is My Best Friend is Cheating on His Wife. Originally posted June 20th, 2024. I don't know if this is the right thread to post, but I need help. My best friend, 33 male, and I, 32 male, have been inseparable since we were five. We went to school together, did most of life's major milestones together, and I consider him my brother in all but blood. When his grandmother passed while we were still in high school, she even had me in her will, leaving me a small trust to use for college. For as long as I can remember, his family has been mine and vice versa. We both got married in 2017. Our wives are very close and have been and have been since we were dating. While I'm not as close with her as my wife, I see his wife like my sister and I care about her the same way. Three days ago, I was riding in my best friend's car when he asked me to put on some music. I picked up his phone and put in his code. We've both known each other's passcodes for years. And while I was navigating Spotify, a text came through from a pizza place that said, Coming over tonight? I sat there stunned for a few seconds before turning and asking him who the fuck is pizza place. And he immediately started yelling at me for going through his messages before I told him what happened. 
He pulled over into a parking lot and spent a few minutes yelling at each other until he finally came clean. He's been hooking up with a co-worker for about a month. He says that he still loves his wife and has no intentions of leaving her. He begged me to not tell his wife and that he's going to find a way to break it off with this other woman. But he says he's in too deep to just ghost her and he doesn't know how to cut it off yet. He swears it will never happen again and that this mistake doesn't warrant ruining his and his wife's marriage. After some back and forth, I reluctantly agreed to stay quiet. But later that day, I remembered something that might change my mind. He and his wife started the process of IVF a few months ago. I haven't pressed for details, but she has used my wife's support through the process, and I know it's been very taxing on her. Ultimately, my dilemma is this. Is it right for me to keep this a secret, knowing that they are trying to bring a child into the world, and knowing that child could be born into a broken home if his wife finds out after she gets pregnant? I'm torn between the friend that I love like my brother and what I feel like would be the right thing to do. I know I'm not the one who was wronged here, but I feel so betrayed and angry. I feel like he's done something that's going to tear apart the small family the four of us have built together and the bigger one we planned on having one day. I know he's not a bad person, and up to this point, I'm pretty sure he has been a model husband. I'm so unsure what to do, and I need help. Edit, thank you for all your replies and advice. I talked to my wife last night, and she asked a friend's wife to come over tomorrow. I talked to my wife last night and she asked a friend's wife to come over tomorrow night to talk. I'll update with more details afterwards. She asked like, he doesn't say I asked to, my friend's wife. He didn't say like, he said a friend's wife, not my friend's wife. I don't know if it's the same one. I think she, she's pulling in like a third party consultant here. Somebody outside of their group is what it sounds like at least. Uh, there is an update before we get into that. What would you do? Telling her is the obvious right thing to do. If you had a bestie for life. And you'd been like brothers or sisters to this point, and they begged you not to. Would you still? Telling her is the right thing to do. Would you still do it with this lifelong bestie begging you not to? So a lot of people get like the the stay out of it mentality. Let them deal with their own shit mentality. I think the majority of people are to say, tell her. IVF changes the situation for sure. Yeah, I mean, it always gets more complicated with kids. But... OP's greatest concern here being that a child is coming into a broken home. Like child could definitely be loved just as much, if not more. So, I mean, I, I don't view that as big of a concern. I think OP or his friend's wife choosing to move forward with the process, not knowing what she knows is important. I'm not worried about the child's happiness. I'm worried about the wife not knowing and still choosing to move forward and, would she would she choose differently if she knew? Like we can't we can't know that. And for the things that you really want, what you say is that you still love your wife and have no intentions of leaving her. Well, if you really love her, you're gonna have to tell her and work through it. Update June 22nd, 2024. First off, thank you everyone for your advice. I think I was still kind of in a mode of shock and panic and reading your comments helped me sober up. I appreciate you all. I'd also like to quickly address those of you who suggested burying it because I have no ties to this woman or he's your friend, not her or bros before hoes. This isn't some random girl you just started hanging out with. They've been married for seven years and were dating two before that. She's a big part of our lives for nearly a decade and is my friend in her own right, even if she doesn't share the same history that me and her husband do. So the idea of I have no ties to her or owe her nothing is just wrong. The evening after posting this, I told my wife, you all were right that I should have kept it from her in the first place. She listened to what happened and then sat silent for a minute. I was afraid she was going to be mad at me for not telling her like a lot of you said, but no. She said that a part of her was relieved because she could tell that something had been severely bothering me these past couple of days. But aside from offering the occasional, are you okay? She still decided that I would tell her when I was ready to share. Though when I told her about the thread, she was slightly annoyed and thought it was silly for me to have brought a problem, brought my problem to a bunch of strangers on the internet before I brought it to her. I apologize for not telling her sooner and for waiting to react despite knowing in my heart what I needed to do. My wonderful, amazing, and astoundingly understanding wife responded with, even when we're sure what is right, it's only human to hesitate when we know it's going to cost us dearly. Damn. Then, <laughs> or that said, she and I are all good. After our discussion, I showed her the thread. She read comments for nearly an hour before we started talking again. Ultimately, we decided that we had to tell my friend's wife who I will hear from here on out refer to as sister, so I don't keep having to say friend's wife. The reason we did this instead of an ultimatum is my wife was concerned he could use the time to cover his tracks or orchestrate her opinion against us. 
Neither of us really felt that would be in character for him, but we wouldn't have thought it in character for him to cheat either. My wife texted sister and asked if she would come over after work the next day. Sister works most of the evening, so she usually gets off around 11. My wife had told her it was a serious conversation, so sister was pretty tense when she arrived at our house. We sat down and told her everything. After hearing it, she took a long breath and said, I've known for a couple of weeks. Apparently, she had asked her boss if she could go home early one night a few weeks ago because she wasn't feeling well and found that he wasn't home. She texted him asking what he was up to and he said he was at home watching TV. She tried to look up his location on their tracking app, but it was turned off. She left home and waited until when her shift would normally end to return. He was home when she got there and when she asked how his evening was or if he did anything interesting, he told her he'd been home all evening watching TV and playing video games. She checked the app again, and sure enough, his location was turned back on. Sister said that until we told her, she didn't have any proof, but felt she knew what must have been happening. We asked her what she was planning to do now that she knew. Here's the part I didn't see coming. She plans to move forward with IVF. According to her, it's always been her lifelong dream to be a mother, and without IVF, it will never happen. IVF is expensive. She won't be able to afford it on her own, and she's afraid that if she leaves her husband, she'll never get another chance. Her current plan is to follow through with implantation and decide what will happen to her marriage afterward. She says they have a healthy embryo, and she wants to give her child a chance, even if it means she could end up raising the child on her own. When I asked if there was any way she could see them reconciling when this is all over, she said it depended on him. In the end, she asked us to please keep it quiet and not tell him that she knows. We agreed and reassured her we'd be there for her if she needed anything. I called my friend the next day and told him that, while I still love him, I need space after learning what he did and that we wouldn't be seeing each other for a while. I still feel a lot of things. Relief from not bearing the secret, sorry for sister and what I fear she's going to have to go through, anger at my friend for destroying our family as it has been, if not destroying it entirely, and grief from what feels like the loss of a person who has been with me for my whole life. I hope for all three of their sakes they can work it out, but I know these chances are slim. This whole thing has been exhausting, and while I'm not sure exactly how to move forward from it, now I can at least try. Thank you all again for your help. I doubt I'll have any more updates. Relevant comments here. Comment, what did your friend say when you told him you didn't want to see him anymore? Original OP, mostly he just kept apologizing and said he was going to fix things. Well, let's hope he does someday. What do you think about the decision to keep moving forward even though she knows? And, and again, I'm sure, I'm sure that this child can be perfectly happy uh, regardless of if they stay together or not. The friend says he's going to fix it. Let's hope he does. Let's hope he does the right thing and he comes clean about it and he, he starts his atonement. I, let's, that's the best we could hope for, really. I, I understand. Yeah, I understand where she's coming from. Um, I th but it would be interesting if he knew that she knew. Would he now oppose IVF? That's tough. That's a tough situation. I mean, you, OP, have done all that you, well, you've done all that you can do. You've done, you've, you've at least unloaded your burden I think a new one's going to creep back in, um, but you've you've at least told her, and that was that was the big thing coming out here. Being human sucks. It's not your bullshit, OP. You got your friend's bullshit to deal with. You got your friend and and your other friend, who's his wife, and now now it's all embroiled in just a giant just mess of spaghetti. <laughs> like, what do you do? What do you do? Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you. This one from AITAH goes like this. Am I the astronaut for telling my wife there's nothing weird about me giving away my niece at, the, at her wedding and that my wife has no say at all? My niece, 26 female, has her wedding in a month and she wants me to give her away at the wedding. Her father passed when she was really young and I felt a moral obligation to help my sister and her daughter because my sister too helped me a lot growing up. I knew I had an obligation to my wife and children primarily, but that didn't mean I couldn't help out my sister and her daughter, too. Since they lived just 10 minutes from us, I tried to be as physically active as possible in my niece's life when she was growing up. My wife and I have had a few arguments on it over the years. I've also been sending money to my sister every month for the past decade or so. It is from my individual account, not the joint account my wife and I share, so I have full liberty to spend it however I want. But my wife does know about it, and we've had arguments on this, too. 
Now coming to the point, my niece, my niece wants me to give her away at her wedding next month, but my wife thinks it's very weird and she doesn't want me to do it. I told my wife there's nothing weird about it and her opinion on this is irrelevant. We have had a lot of discussions on this over the past week and I am made to feel like a bad guy by my wife. Am I the bad guy? Am I the asshole if I were to give my niece away at her wedding? Candy Thunder has left us some notes. Let's hear the thoughts of Candy Thunder. How is this weird? I can't understand how an uncle stepping in to help his niece is weird. It sounds like he has been a father figure to her since her dad passed. Walking a niece down the aisle now doesn't take away from walking a daughter down the aisle later in life. If this was my dad, I would feel honored that he had impacted someone else's life in the same way he has impacted me. Yeah, it can be nothing else but jealousy, right? It can be nothing else than it's it's not even it's not even taking away anything that she feels like would would be hers, but there's an opportunity cost involved because it might have been if he wasn't sending money to them every month, he might have bought more stuff for her from his individual fund. If he didn't spend so much time over there, maybe she would have more attention. So maybe it's just purely about all the things that she has not had, not that she's in a deficit, but all the things that she could have had potentially if he had not devoted so much time, energy, and money to them. That's weird. Translation, I'm jealous as F. Beyond. I mean, that's it. But why would you make someone feel bad about doing something good? Gotta be jealousy, right? Just possessiveness? She could have been, She could have had an extra daughter and sister. Google Queen Cat, damn good point. She could have viewed this as a positive from the get-go and included them in their family, and then not had to have been away from him all this time. And then not had to, to, to see the fruits of, of the, the monthly tithing he sends to them from, from afar or in her imagination. She could have been a part of this good thing instead of opposing this good thing and turning it into a bad thing in her mind. The rest of the world views it as a good thing, though, Bizzo. It's a good thing to the rest of the world. You're the only person who doesn't like it. And that only makes sense if you're jealous of his time, energy, money that has been directed somewhere else. Attention. Let's just sum it all up as he has given someone else attention. And now she's dropping the it's weird thing to try to make you feel creepy as a man who has been a father figure to a girl. The creepy thing is supposed to like, that's supposed to be like an all, all, all bets are off. Like you're creepy, right? As a dude, you have no choice if you if you hear like the your creepy thing to be like, retreat. Comment from OP just pasted in by Candy Thunder. She's given many reasons. Like for example, oh, font size changing as I'm reading. Oh wait, wife has given many reasons. Like for example, one reason being that we have a daughter who isn't married yet, and she feels like I am closer to my niece than my daughter, which isn't true at all. And then she says, symbolically, me going to my niece's wedding as her father figure while my sister being there as her mother, she thinks it's weird. <sighs> she's using that. That's bullshit. Like she just, she's just, she's reaching now. She's trying to come up with anything she can. But what does she lose? If you do this, if you walk your niece down the aisle, what does your wife's life lose? Not a damn thing. Except for not being able to control you that one time. Nobody's going to view this as weird. I think it, it, it almost feels like she wants, she wants them to feel, to feel the pain of her control or of not having you. I don't know. Maybe she feels like they, they have more claim to you than she does. And she doesn't like that. Like it's a power struggle thing. I don't know. It's, it's not. Uh, your opposition is creepy, OP's wife. That's the only thing creepy here. Your opposition to this. Like, why would you have such a problem with it? It's weird that you have a problem with it. It's weird that you think it's weird. So am I the ass kind of for telling my wife there's nothing weird about me giving away my niece at her wedding and that my wife has no say at all? Hell no. And good on you, OP, for saying that your opinion on this matter is irrelevant. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on, because if you said those words, your opinion on this matter is irrelevant. I can imagine the f steam coming out of your wife's ears, like eyes rolled back in the back of her head, head probably spun a 360 right on her neck, and she spun around and looked exactly like this. Like, you said her opinion was irrelevant. 
And you would think, you would think that would be enough to be like, okay, don't push anymore because I can make you matter less. Uh, but, but no, she continues to press. Wow. So what's going to, I mean, what's going to happen here, OP? I mean, she's going to keep pushing to the, now, now what you have to think about because being a human sucks is that if your wife attends this wedding and you walk her down the aisle, what kind of stink is she going to cause? Now you have to think about that kind of shit. You have to think about your wife really can't be at the wedding because when you walk your niece down the aisle, she's going to stand up and say some shit. There's a risk with your wife attending the wedding now. She can't go. Hey there, Dusty Thunder. Story time. From Reddit, AITA. Am I the astronaut for telling my sister she can't name her baby after my mom? Oh, shit. For context, I, 25 female, have four siblings. 25 female, 23 female, 28 male, and 30 male. My mom passed away last year after a long battle with cancer. My entire family is very close, and my mom loved her grandbabies. Sadly, she was only able to see my daughter, two female, a couple of times before she passed. My husband, 26 male, and I decided to name our daughter after my mom. Except we swapped my mom's middle name and first name for our daughter. Example, my mom's name was Jane Doe and our daughter's name is Doe Jane. Recently, my sister-in-law, 32 female, announced she and my brother Jake, 30 male, are expecting their fourth child and it's a girl. While at a family dinner, my sister-in-law also announced they plan to name the baby Doe Jane after my mom. I became upset and pointed out that my daughter was already named Doe Jane, and my sister-in-law asked why there couldn't be two Doe Janes in honor of my mom. Okay. Okay. Now it makes perfect sense. <laughs> Good gravy. Are you shitting me? Are you shitting me? I became... <laughs> this led to a full-blown argument where sister-in-law and my brother stormed out after. Now, my brother Jake, sister-in-law, and other brother expect me to apologize for monopolizing a name and embarrassing my sister-in-law. They said I can't own a name and sister-in-law can name her baby whatever she wants. My husband and twin agree with me that it's weird to have two kids with the same name and it's unfair to my daughter. My dad and other siblings do agree with me but think I went about it in an asshole way. I can't tell if I'm really in the wrong. I don't want my sister-in-law to steal my baby's name, but she's right. I don't own the name. Am I the astronaut? Top comment, NTA, these comments are so weird. Yes, people don't own names, but you're not trying to save a name for a future human being, but one that already exists. Regardless how folks feel about it, yes, I do own my name. And if someone wanted to give their child my name, not just anyone, but a close relative, I would find it extremely rude and weird. I should add that I have a very common name. Also, I should add that I have over 50 cousins and oddly none have the same name as me. Just the number of options and variants that are out there make it so weird that a person would want to name their child my full name. Brother and sister-in-law could have chose Jane Doe or Jane something else. But to literally give your child the same first and middle of someone in your immediate family is tacky, thoughtless, and ridiculous. I, uh, I don't, like, what's the thought process going on here, sister-in-law? Is the thought process something like, well, you know, they're only going to see each other at, like, family gatherings and stuff. So, I mean, then we can just call ours, like, Jane 1, and theirs can be Jane 2, right? Or we can call call theirs Janie or Jay something, you know, something like that. Also, your last name is the same as your mom's last name. So, ours will actually be a little bit better because it will match her full name. Whereas... Hers, the last name's different because she got married. Pick a different name. It's weird. It's disrespectful. Like it's just, it's not the done thing, mate. It's just, it's not the done thing. I understand wanting to honor her in some way, but choosing the exact same name, like first, same first and middle name as, as a cousin that's close, that like they see often. It's not like a, a distant relative. This is a close relative. It seems tacky and weird now op op might have gone about it a little bit <laughs> a little bit softer because obviously the the approach here did cause some some blowback but uh I, I don't think she's wrong for doing it she doesn't own the name sister could still name this kid that name knowing that op has a problem with it like if she doesn't care she doesn't care 
And obviously she doesn't care because she chose it in the first place. So she's not preventing her. She's voicing her opposition. Hey, Dusty Thunder here, and I wanted to thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed that content. And if you did, please make sure to like, subscribe, and most importantly, share. Also, you can find swag and so much more at dusty-thunder.com, and you'll find even more content on all of our platforms. We're on TikTok, YouTube. We now have an official Facebook page that we'll be posting stories to as well. We have podcasts on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and so much more. You can see all of our content platforms on Linktree, which is linked in my bio. Engage with us wherever you're enjoying content and do your best to avoid the astronauts today. Thanks again.